Hello, uh, welcome back to part two for this snow speeder video. So here it is. Um, here's the recap of the paint job. I'll do a bit of a voiceover and speed it up so it's not too boring for you, but you'll be able to see how I, how I do this. This is in my own method. I just learned this over the years, making many Star Wars models. You get into the way that, um, that the guys painted them originally, all the little chippings, not being too precise about everything is the key, really, with a Star Wars one, especially if you're doing it from scratch. You can go crazy. Like, this isn't following any particular reference because it never existed as a real model. When you do a normal Star Wars model, you're trying to copy and replicate all the little pieces of weathering to match the original filming miniature. This one, completely freestyle. So you throw your stuff at it, you do it in the way that you want. So, you know... There are no rules with these things. Uh, so anyway, prattling on. Here's the video of how it got to this. I've done a bit more work on the snow speeder thing, trying to get it ready for a kit form. There's loads more work to do before anything's ready to go yet. Uh, I've got to fill all these edges and sand and smooth all the little plastic card edges. But I've got a thing coming up and I want to show it off a little bit. So I'm going to give it a lick of paint. Because it's a concept speeder, I don't have to follow any rules. No one's seen this before, so uh, I'm not too sure where to start. I didn't want to do the standard snow speeder markings with all the bits, orange here and orange here and you know all the stuff. I don't want to do that. I want to do something a little different. So I made a few sketches, just quick ones, to try and work out where the lines look kind of cool. You know, this one looked all right, but it looked a bit Klingon-y. Then I decided to do this one with a big number eight on the side. I thought that looked quite cool, actually. Um, and then I worked through a number of iterations. Where do I put the stripes? This one makes it look a bit Battlestar Galactica. This one's a bit Klingon, like I say. This one, there's too much going on on the wings. The wings look too big. Um, so I decided to go for something along the lines of this top right-hand one here with a couple of little markings on the leading and trailing edge of the wing. So I tweaked that, made another quick sketch. So what I'm gonna do is put two lines parallel to each other, in line with each other on this trailing edge panel and on this first panel in on the wing, just here. So there'll be two stripes there and two on this lighter panel at the back. I've already given this a quick go over just to pick a few panels out, dead simple. Then I'm going to add a couple of stripes onto the top sections here and then put a load of uh, writing warning signs and all the business on the front. Colour wise, I don't want to do orange. So what I've decided to do is the stripes on the wings will be two colours of green because I think the green goes really nice with this uh, sort of floquil, grimy colour. Um, I may blend them and just do two stripes with blended colour in between. I think that would look quite nice. Okay, so here I'm laying down a couple of colours of green, followed by a light pass of bright yellow just in the centre section to pick it out, make it a little bit more varied. You'll hardly see it when the tape comes off, so there you go. Uh, put the top ones on, finding the centre line, making uh, the stripes the same width as an individual piece of 10mm masking tape. Blast those on. Because it's still got the yellow in, started with that shade first, then put the darker one on afterwards. Now moving on to a little sanding stick. Just to take off some of the top surface of those greens, it'll pull through the colours and the layers and the yellow and stuff and it'll also reveal any undulation on the base coat, which comes through as a little dot. So it looks a bit more like natural weathering rather than um, bits of masking fluid and what have you. I think it gives a nice effect. Once all the rest of the layers go on, uh, I think it should look pretty good. Just making sure I've got some kind of definition to the edges. So always rub the edges off. It gives a nice crisp feel to the edge of the panel. So now they're on, I will be starting off with this, my brown dirt mix, which is this brown, which is red brown, 
and I mix it with flat black and a touch of white and it just makes a blooming awful colour which is perfect. So now I'm going over a few areas with the uh, dark brown and black mix. I'm looking really to where I want to put the shading in. It's a good colour for exhaust gases so I'm filling in those bits and I'm also going to blast a bit into the recesses and around edges like you can see on top of the cooling fins at the back there just to make the colour a little bit more dull and separate from the base coat. I'm trying to look for areas where I want to shadow just to keep it a little bit more dynamic. All these areas are going to get rust on top, three different layers of rust in three different colours. Uh, but this is the start phase. I use this to basically sketch out how I want the balance of the, uh, of the thing to look, where I want the shadows and where I want the dirt. A bit of tape across the bottom layer just to protect the panels underneath because I only want the scorch marks to come out from the vent, not on the panel underneath them. Use little masking tape edges like that just to trick the eye and produce a bit more detail. Don't want to get too many streaks on this bit, but same colour, it's that brown, black with a touch of white mix in it. Now onto the details, put in a couple of little red logos, I think this is Escape. These are uh, laser cut on the masking tape, which is actually really nice. You can get down to a super small size with that. You can see on the panel there, there's a little scratch mark. That was made with a craft knife. I do those first to put lots of tiny little scratches in the surface. So this is a very light Florian wash going on there. It's a light gray. Um, Normally you'd put it all over and wipe it off, but I'm just strategically planting it in places and allowing it to dry in little globules. I'm going to build up the layers of texture with a few different colours just to see how things go. I want to get a very subtle changes in colour on the surface of the panels and a little bit of dirty scuffy marks in the corners. It's a very light pass this, so I'm just adding more of this very subtle liquid wash into the corners, soaking it off allowing it to dry, adding a bit more. Now you can see on the fins at the back all the white messy blobs. They're done with a grey pigment, it's a powder pigment mixed with Tamiya thinners and that allows you to throw it on, it'll capillary action down the edges but what more importantly what it does when it's dry you can wipe it off again with a little damp towel. So you can splat it on like that in the back and then when you get close to finished before you seal the model you just wipe it off again and it all cleans up. Now the rust, again this is a uh, powder pigment mixed with Tamiya, you can paint it on but more importantly when it's dry you can manoeuvre it and add stuff to it and change things. I'm then going to go over that layer with a red oxide primer mixed with a yellow filler primer car paint that seals it into the surface and then I'm going over the top of that with the next two colours of rust. So it's nice to vary your colours within a rust patch because they're never the same. But the little airbrush press in between just blends the surfaces together and makes it look a bit less like a blob of paint and more like something which has migrated around the area, if you see what I mean. Happy with the rust, I'm now adding some more of that um, black and brown mix. This one is a slightly lighter shade with a touch more white in, just to give a bit of definition between the two colours. I'm also using it to put on tiny little dots of paint just at the front of each of the scratches. So I'm masking off areas, doing a few streaks, not too many, I don't want it to look like a zebra. A little bit of sanding in between. Now I'm starting to get the surfaces to live with each other, they're all kind of coming into the same kind of world. So this is 3mm carbon, dipped into a, I think it's a German grey and used a little bit like an ink roller, just on the edge of the panels, just to pick out a few details. You don't want it all over the place looking exactly the same, just in areas where you want the wear. 
So if you concentrate these marks in the areas where you put your grey shading, you can then get the two to kind of harmonise and it looks like the shading has got a scratch at the beginning of it and etc etc. So don't just be random with your attachment to this. Again, just adding a little bit of silver to the edges of the grey and the black on the interior just to make things look a little bit more damaged. Okay, <clears throat> a few layers in now. Um, you can see now that I've got weathering running vertically down the body as well. Not too much, because I want to hint that it's been standing still and got rained on and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to add more at the front. You can see this area seems a little bit blank to me. I'm happy with the way these are going. We know we're near finished, obviously. Um, this section needs a few chips on it, a bit more like the top. Got to be careful not to overdo this. So once this is all dry on the edge of this cockpit, I'm going over that again with a very fine sandpaper just to cut through the layer that I just put on in the black and that'll define that edge a bit more. So first hit's gonna be titanium silver. So while that dries off, I'm going to add a few more little uh, dark grey marks around the edges with my 3mm carbon stick roller type affair. Just being nice and careful not to make everything super regular. I want it to have some kind of random feel to it, you know. It's quite easy to use if you just roll it along an edge. You can really keep your uh, marks really specific what I'm doing now is just looking for little areas that I want to highlight the edges on not dramatically just enough to put a bit of a scuff mark on there don't want to go too mental and do the whole thing exactly the same all over the place because it just looks repetitive and it looks like you've not thought about what you're doing. So hopefully, are we dry yet? It's pretty cold in here today, so this silver's taking a while to kick off. Okay, so I'm going to start on this leading edge get myself a little pool on the masking tape so I can start to work this area in. Okay, so we've got the uh, silver done with the base coat over the top. I'm just going to let the base coat dry off a fraction on there. It's nice to work it this way because you end up with the actual layering of the paint the way that it should be. This way looks a little bit more authentic, especially when you get some heavy weathering on the front. So now we've got the silver blinging through, I'm just going to de-bling it. Now I've got it to this stage, um, I ease off a bit because you don't want to overdo it. I know this isn't done enough, but I want to recalibrate my mind on it again. So what I'm going to do now is flip it over and do the bottom. Get something 
similar going on there. So here we are at the beginning again, scratching off with the craft knife just to put a few little chips in. Remember I put the little grey dots at the end of these, at the front edge of these scratches once I get the thing going. You can see a few on the surface there. As I'm building this one up, I'm just looking for places that are a bit blank and adding the dirt into the areas where I want it, around the hinges, where the engines are. Where's that dirt going to go? Is it going to make a cloud or is it going to be a streak? You know, just adding surface texture all the time just to try and build the thing a little bit more uh, detail. This is that same very thin wash again just popping it into a couple of little cracks, trying to build up a slight bit of definition between panel edges. Nothing dramatic, I don't want the whole thing to look like a cartoon. Just keep going with that, allowing it to dry between the little stages. Gives a really nice feel to it once it comes together. Back onto the airbrushing now, putting a little bit more streaking detail onto each one of those panels that I've put a bit more surface detail onto previously. Adding the dots onto those little scratches that I put on. Just using masking tape to enhance a couple of edges and give me a little bit more definition to the bottom surface. Get the angles, I need a cloud of dirt where it all came out from the engines, you know, that kind of thing. Now adding the tiny details on the top surface. Rightio, so we're a few hours in now and it's looking pretty good. Got all the various different bits on it. Um, wasn't sure about the green. It looked too lightweight. I don't know, it's something funky about it. So what I decided to do was darken off the green sections closest to the edge of the wings just to bring the weight out a little bit. And I think that looks better with two tones. I'm gonna to go for two tones of stripes. This one will be darker and this one will be darker and uh, do the same on the other side. I think that should look pretty good. Tucked into the corner of the windows here is brown pigment all around the edges because obviously dirt's going to settle in the corners of your windows. And the last thing you want on one of these is this window to be absolutely perfectly clear because that never happens in real life. There's always dirt on there. That's why we have windscreen wipers. And there it is. Ralph McQuarrie snow speeder concept in 1 12th scale. It's pretty much a done and dusted uh, assembly now. Just the mouldings to do and then I'm pretty much ready to rock apart from the instructions which are going to be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> it's over 260 parts on this, would you believe? <laughs> so if you want a challenge this is the kit for you. <laughs> Hope you like it. See you.